Welcome back everyone. It's Sunday. It's a brand new video and this video is going to cover our snowbird getaway this winter, which was Portugal, which is different than we normally do. We tend to go to the Caribbean or Central America, which is really hot. Mm -hmm. So we figure we try a different destination this year and see what that's like. So it's not as hot, but there's so many other things to do. It's a, it, it was amazing. So you're going to want to check this out. Yeah. It's our base, unbiased thoughts on it. Uh, recommendations you can uh, yeah. you know either follow them or not but it gives you an idea so get ready for this ride and oh stay tuned to the end of the video because yeah. there's a surprise coming on this channel yeah and we'll fill all that in for you right after this yeah welcome fellow travelers we are Fern and Frank with Java Walker World it is our mission in this retirement to make sure we see as much of this world as we can and we want to inspire you. So let's get started. All right, so we've been back for a little while now. We jumped right into a house sit. If you don't know, we belong to Trusted House Sitters, yeah. which helps supplement our travel accommodations yeah. anyway. If you want more information on Trusted House Sitters, I'll leave a link in the description below and you can go on to our playlist of Trusted yeah. House Sitters. But that's not th what this video is about. No. Today we're talking about Portugal and traveling there. Uh, in this, in our case, it's as snowbirds going yes. there for the winter, escaping for us the Canadian winter. Yeah. So let's jump right into it. We went for two months, our first time ever there. So yeah. we didn't know what to experience, what to expect, mm -hmm. like most people when they travel, wouldn't say blind. But uh, we flew into Lisbon. Mm -hmm. So for us, we had a connection out of Toronto. Mm -hmm. uh, I think all in all, it was about seven and a half hour flight, time lag, all that kind of stuff. We had already previously pre-ordered a car, pre-booked a car. Mm -hmm. And I must say, we use Discovery Cars, which is a platform that you can pick from 12 to 14 different uh, car rental companies. Mm -hmm. And you pick what you like, automatic yeah. size, all that kind of stuff. And it, it worked out worked perfectly out for us. Let me tell you, the platform was easy to follow. Uh, this is not sponsored in any no. way. This is just our recommendations. And the company that we ended up renting it from was Specific Car Rent, rental, and, and they yeah. were amazing. We got to the airport. Mm -hmm. uh, they didn't. Ha they do not have a booth there. You call them. So we called them, and the fellow's name was George. He was fantastic. He, was he says, "I will be right there, and I have the car there already for you, all gassed up, ready and clean." I thought, "Oh, that's great." He yeah. was there within oh, not even ten minutes. Took us to the vehicle. And we did the uh, traditional walk around, check it, yeah. all that kind of stuff. It was and great. And what was great is we had booked one month, 30 yes. days uh, with the car rental. And we thought, well, maybe we'll do that first and then we'll take public transit yeah. and so forth. But the more we had the independence of having a car, yeah. it just, we just decided it's a big difference. we're going to book the whole two months with yeah. them, which we did. So we booked uh, the first 30 days and then the last, we did a day. informal return and a new contract and did another 30 yeah. days. So yeah. yeah, in this case, because as you'll hear, we went down to the Algarve, which was mm -hmm. a three hour drive from where we were staying. There was no need to return the car. Everything was done online, which was yeah, super. Yeah, which was really great. Very super accommodating. So that's our recommendation there on transportation. Now there are there is a lot of transportation mm -hmm. available to you in Southern Portugal. Portugal's in general, there are buses and trains, uh, all of that available of to you. Uh, and reasonably priced. It really is. Yeah. So if you don't want to drive, you don't have to. You can get around from point A to point B very easily. Yeah. And you can book online. You can buy the, the passes, mm -hmm. which they have a pass that you just yeah. swipe. Or you book right there and then at the transit. Yeah. So we found all three avail readily available. For us, the freedom of having a car and just getting in the car and going wherever we wanted mm. to go was ideal for us. So one question might a lot of people might want to ask, well, why are you going to Portugal? Because it's not necessarily hot there. The temperatures are different. We're going as snowbirds. We want heat. We want to get rid of uh, away from our Canadian winters. Mm -hmm. So uh, we did have a bit of a, um, um, how can I say, uh, not a learning curve. I would say the first seven to 10 days, it was a little damp and rainy, and we had a bit of a hard time getting that chill out of our bones. Now, this is something that I think is important to note. We arrived there in January, yes. and we saw a huge difference once February hit. Yes. So for next time, if we choose to go back, which I think we might go back again next season, um, we would push we, it back. We would push it back. We wouldn't go in January. It's also a lot slower in January. It's right yeah. after the Christmas holidays, New Year's, all of that. 
and so a lot of shops and are restaurants closed. are on vacation. Yeah, it's their they, version. Yeah. They are tired. They are taking now their vacation. So we found things very sleepy yeah. in January. February, everything sort of changed. Mm -hmm. It got warmer. It got more activities, and things were starting oh, yeah. to happen. You're hustling and so bustling. So for next a lot year, more. for us, we're gonna go if we go. Yeah. February and March. Now, the other one mm -hmm. uh, that would be accommodations. Wide variety of accommodations from homes, the condos, to uh, just maybe uh, a couple of rooms in someone's house, depending on how long you want to go for. Yeah, they have everything available yeah. to you. For us, what we did, we did an Airbnb. Airbnb. That's what we chose to do. We found the host very, yes. very professional. Oh, yeah. Everything was spotless and clean and very accommodating. They couldn't do enough for us. Yeah. And I thought it was really great. We've gone to other places uh, for the winter. And, you know, it's kind of hard to connect, mm -hmm. hard to communicate. It's just really bad. In Portugal, almost everybody, at least all yes. the young people, all the professionals, speak. all speak English. Yeah. And they really encourage that. So you can go to a restaurant, anything like that, go grocery shopping, and you can get somebody to understand you. This is one destination you won't have to worry about the language barrier. Yeah. I've heard that about other countries. Uh, I, I don't know. I've never been there. But like maybe Italy or France or Germany, they do speak English. Uh, but here you could see it was everywhere. The signage was in English, German, uh, Portuguese, yeah. Spanish. So uh, the banking machines are very easy to, to Even deal. when we were driving, the stop signs yeah. actually said stop, stop. Yeah. instead of parar, parar. Or para, mm -hmm. something like that. It actually said stop, yeah. the word in English. Mm -hmm. So going back to the accommodations, they were nicely located for grocery stores. We were mm -hmm. able to walk to grocery stores with our bags mm -hmm. and walk back, pick up mm -hmm. whatever we needed. And one thing I must say, if you do rent an Airbnb, maybe or check that they have a heating system. At that time of the year, there is it's a bit damp. Mm -hmm. So not being used to it, like I said, it takes a few days to get that chill out of your bones. Mm -hmm. And it's nice to have the heating system in the condo unit. It takes that right out. You get acclimatized. Yeah, the humidity is is what makes you feel cold. Yes. Um, you, the buildings there are mostly built out of blocks, yeah. so cement. And that keeps the place cool in summer, which mm -hmm. is great. But the humidity in the winter is kind of hard to take. So um, yeah. next year we won't have that problem because we won't go in Yeah, January. you go a little bit later. It <laughs> should, yeah, it'll help that. So the average temperature from what I can remember ran anywhere from like 13 on the low side up to 23. We got some yeah. days we were in 23. We, were, we went on the beach. Yeah. So, you know, we were on the beach at the end of January in our shorts and, you know, sitting in the sun and, and that kind of stuff. So it's pleasant yeah. weather. And not only that, because it is low season for them, we're going in the, what you would call winter. We're in the Northern Hemisphere, yeah. Portugal's in the Northern Hemisphere, and it's winter time. Uh, and so it is low season, so everything was a lot less expensive. It wasn't crowded. Um, normal uh, destination spots that you would go sightseeing for normally would be really, really yeah. crowded. And we had the space for, you know, to just walk around and enjoy it. So we really liked that. Yeah, that's what we heard. And that's what I wanted to get away was from the crowds. You go to the Caribbean or you go to Central America or any mm. and people are all gravitating towards the heat in the winter. Uh, this is the opposite. And that's what we kept hearing while we were there. Mm. You know, this is, this is doable here. Mm. This is comfortable here. You don't have the crowds mm. and all that kind of stuff. And you can see that over the years, I started reading some articles as, as I was there over the years that the tourism has increased over the last two or three years after the pandemic started mm -hmm. to ease up that people started going there more in january february and mm -hmm. march and you have all cultures there you have a lot of brits you have a lot of people from ireland germany mm -hmm. from spain from france uh you get a contingency from the u.s not as big uh, from canada um, or the u.s a lot uh, from canada yeah from canada a lot, a lot, a lot of, of expats or uh, reason you know obvious for obvious reasons in Canada it's freezing cold like yeah. really if we're going to a place and it is 16 degrees 17 18 19 we're happy oh yeah we're very oh, no. happy oh no that's for sure mm -hmm. uh in terms of um places to eat tons tons of places to eat mm -hmm. any kind of food you're not going to be stuck with just eating the traditional Portuguese meals Everything from Indian cuisine to Chinese to very, Greek food, very international. Uh, shawamas, all that kind of stuff. Yeah. We gravitated more towards the Portuguese uh, food. Um, I think just, it's just because we have a Portuguese background, background 
and we don't necessarily cook Portuguese style. I guess we have some influence in our own cooking, mm -hmm. personal, but really we don't know how to do that. But we remember our moms, our moms, exactly. our moms cooking. home cooking, mom's home and so cooking. So it took us back to that cooking, and yeah. so we we longed for that, and so we ate a lot of Portuguese mm. style. Fresh barbecued fish, yeah, and, sardines, uh, or chicken, uh, or barbecued beef, and it's very, very simple food, but mm. flavorful. But one warning: if you want Portuguese authentic food, try when you go by a restaurant, try and see who's in it, who's operating it, maybe who's working in the kitchen or behind. As you can see, if they are Portuguese, you're going to get Portuguese authentic. authentic. If you go in like we did, we went into one and uh, the, it says authentic Portuguese food. The menu was full of yeah. all Portuguese stuff. We ordered it, but it was a different culture who owned it behind yeah. the scenes and, mm -hmm. and the food was not the same. It was just... It was good. It was, don't, oh no. Don't get us wrong. No, it don't, was good. No, it was good. But you know when you're anticipating a certain flavor... And you don't get that. Mm -hmm. It was disappointing yeah, in that way. Exactly. When I mean, yeah, exactly. And the other thing I wanted to mention, normally when we go south, um, I'm not saying the States like Central America or in the Caribbean and you go south for, we all, we have very sensitive tummies. And so we find we end up with some problems stomach wise. Mm -hmm. And we didn't have that at all. Nothing here. Portugal. No need to take mm -hmm. your Ducalax or, or all those uh, tummy remedies with you. Now, again, if, if people have certain issues, they'll have to watch out. But you could have gluten free, you can get vegetarian meals there, all readily available. Everything. Now, in terms of attractions, blow your mind, blew my mind. I got there, I had a sore neck for the whole time. And I think it was just from me mm -hmm. turning around, oh, look at that, look at that. It was amazing. History, culture, the beaches. Those beaches are spectacular. spectacular. The cliffs that back onto them, pretty much mm -hmm. in the Algarve uh, where we were in Portimao. Uh, you walk down steps to get to these beaches mm -hmm. and you see the tide going in, tide going out, and then you see the massive of the beach. So actually going back to that, our home base was Portimao, uh, Portugal in the Algarve. That was our home base. That's mm -hmm. where the condo was. Mm -hmm. And we found it nicely located because we were within the most an hour and 20 minutes from the furthest town or city that we visited while we were yeah. there. You know, within the southern coast. The southern coast, mm -hmm. yes. So basically, I did a count the other day. While we were there for the two months, we actually visited 16 different cities or towns. Places mm -hmm. like uh, mm -hmm. from uh, Faro to Albaferia, which are the big popular ones, but down to the small villages like Alvor, uh, down to uh, Monchique, which is a mountain town. Yeah. Uh, down to uh, Tavera, which is a, only a 20-minute drive to the Spanish border. Oilo um, uh, de Praia, which is a quaint little town, which was really blew you away when you went there. It's like, oh, this is here. Yeah. So there's so many places yeah. to see. Hence, having the car gave us the freedom to do that. Now, we loved every part of it. Oh, she we was loved fantastic. every village. We loved Every city, mm -hmm. you know, some are busier, some are less busier, some are more resorty, some are very authentic. Uh, like Puerto Mount is a working yes. city uh, with normal Portuguese people living there, working and living their lives. And our condo was in the middle of all of that. Yeah. And there is beaches right there, oh. very, very we, close. We walked to them. That's how yeah. we didn't need to get in the car to go to the beach. But where Fern was saying... Where we were, were working families and yeah. people. They would come home mm -hmm. at the end of the day, leave early in the morning. Yeah. So you felt like part of the crowd, which yeah. was really good. Now you go into Albaferia and Ma yeah. Albaferia, um, or Faro. It's more of a touristy area, so you mm -hmm. will see everybody's, you know, in the touristy mode. Yeah. You can see they're they're from other nations and that kind of yeah. stuff, which is good too. I did find Albaferia busy. Yeah. Even for that time of the year, we drove there a couple of times and checked it out. And but not in January. In January, because it was yeah, a tourist right. area, mm -hmm. it was totally dead. Yeah. Dead. And it was. so because it doesn't have local people living yeah. there, really. I mean, I'm sure it does, it does. but not that many. No. Uh, so, but if you ask us what our favorite place was, if we were, if we had to choose anywhere in southern Portugal to go back to, mm -hmm. our favorite would be. Alvor. Yes. And for us, it's because it hit all the touristy type of boxes that you want without it being a big city. Um, it's very centrally located and it is very nice with the nice restaurants and nice walkways yeah. and very villagey. 
we like that. And you get the it was, fisherman's, yeah. uh, fisherman's market on Sundays. Yeah. You get the catch coming in on a daily basis. The estuary there yeah. if you like to walk, walk. a lot. Yeah. It was very, very beautiful. Oh, uh, mm -hmm. Nice restaurants. We went for a couple of nice dinners there. It was Fern's birthday while we were away. We went for a nice meal and it was just, uh, it was fantastic. Now, like Fern says, we have a Portuguese background. Our heritage is Portuguese. So we speak Portuguese. So it was, it was a nice added bonus because we could then, you know, speak to a lot of the people in their own language kind of stuff like yeah. that, which was good. But English was not a problem. So you would yeah. not have to worry if you went there. That's for sure. Mm -hmm. But yeah, we checked everything from uh, big cities to Lisbon to Cascais. <gasps> to oh Sintra. So, Central oh. Portugal. Oh my God. Beautiful. We gorgeous, just gorgeous. loved it. We decided to take, was it, I think four days yeah. at the end of our trip and do Central Portugal. So we went into Lisbon. We booked a really nice hotel mm -hmm. right in a right the busy, busy praça right downtown in Chiado, which is a very mm -hmm. trendy area. Mm -hmm. And we decided to go to Sintra and do Cascais, which are the key places that you want to go mm -hmm. see if you're flying oh, into definitely. the Lisbon area. Now, remember one thing. These places we're talking about, and even some that we haven't mentioned, because I said I think it was about a total of 16, so I don't want to bore you with all the names, but they're in our playlist, in our vlog. So if you want to check them out and go, we've touched upon every, one, every spot yeah. that we were in, even our accommodations, the car rentals, the beaches, you will see all this. Yeah. This is just a Coles Notes. Yeah. And you'll see some of the pictures flashing. Uh, as you I, see, as we're speaking, you'll see some yeah. of the sites that we've been to. And we did play around with doing just walking tours yeah. uh, versus a vlog. And we did that for most of the most of the places we visited and, and provided the footage to you in both options. Uh, yeah. Some people like to do to just do the, the walking tour mm -hmm. and not a lot of talking, where a vlog is, is very yeah, different. Yeah, so you, on Thursdays with more of a raw, just walk, and on, on Sundays more in depth. It was more, you yeah. know, sort of um, more in depth. our thing. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, so I would, in a nutshell, to end this, mm -hmm. because you're going to have to watch those other videos. Yeah. Uh, to end this, we would highly recommend it for someone who wants an alternative to, say, the Caribbean or some other place. Yeah. I would recommend give it at least a try. If yeah. you don't want it, I wouldn't go the whole bang two months at yeah. one shot. I would start off slowly. Especially if you're a bit of a history buff, mm. you like that sort of thing, lots of history with the Moorish and the Romans going through there and all the castles, all of that. And especially if you are like us where heat is starting to wear on us when we go someplace yeah. extremely hot. It's harder um, to handle. It's harder to handle. And that's because we're getting a little older and that's why mm -hmm. we feel. And that's why for snowbirds, it's an ideal location. It's sort of like going to Florida. You know how Florida is kind of cool, um, not very, very hot unless you go to like the, the southern top. part. Yeah, the very, very tip of it. Uh, so it's very similar in temperature wise to like Florida. Mm. But if you go bring a pair of shorts, bring t-shirts, a polo shirt, mm -hmm. a sweater, light jacket or a vest, you'll yeah. be fine. Your jeans, your runners, because yeah. you're going to want to do a lot of walking. Mm -hmm. And uh, oh yes, no, definitely. And I want to do a shout out to Cafe Creme. They were our go-to place for our, <laughs> our coffees because you know that's that Java part. Yeah. And it was no more than maybe a seven, eight minute walk in the morning. And it was nice because again, it was just the locals coming and going and they had a nice setup, a little outdoor, a, a little inside with floor to ceiling glass, windows, uh, a sunken one if you wanted more inside, no hassles and talk about people who work hard uh, or quick. You go up, place your order and before you know it, it's at your, it's at your desk, uh, your desk, it's, it's your at your table. table. Mm -hmm. So yeah, it is really, so shout out mm -hmm. to Cafe Cream and uh, so yeah, we're going to end this, but we said we had a surprise for you at the end of the video. So stay tuned. We're going to tell you what the surprise yeah, is. Yeah, there's going to be a little change to our video. Just an added addition. Just an added addition. Hoping that um, you will fall in love with this new um, this yeah. new thing that's going to happen to Java this Walker thing. World. Thing. <laughs> this thing. So let us uh, just Just stay share tuned. You're going to see you. that. Just stay tuned. Yeah. Thank you for being with us. And we'll introduce you to the new member of, of Java, Java Walker, Walker World. World. So here we are, we're back home. Uh, you, as you can see, this is not Portugal anymore. <laughs> and when we came home, we had a surprise on our door. We ordered something from Amazon and look what was in the box. <laughs> this thing, this fussy little thing. This is Molly. She's gonna be new on the channel. Molly yeah. wind up being the star. 
<laughs> well, she's a little Frenchie. She's only four months old. And she's the new star of the show, aren't you? Yes, you yeah. are. Yeah. If you are on social media, check us out because we are on Instagram and Facebook and you can find us at Instagram at Java Walker World, Facebook at Java Walker, or of course on YouTube at Java Walker World. Oh, and if you're wondering where we are in the background, how it looks so different, we are doing a trusted house sitter sit. We're here in the Kawarthas of Ontario doing a three-week sit. We're taking care of two little cats. And of course, we can't show you their home, um, but uh, it's a beautiful place. We have waterfronts, it's a beautiful cottage, two little cats we're taking care of. And of course, we were so happy they allowed us to bring our little gift with us and our new little character for the channel. All right, everybody, we'll see you next week. Remember, we upload new videos every Sunday. See you then. See you next week.